Hey, every pony, and welcome back to Simeon Jimmy's Treehouse Podcast. I am Simeon Jimmy, joined as always by Eggy Eggman Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, amigos. How you doing? I'm on my fuego today. Yes, sir. Okay, Eggy, I, I, starting I, I, at the end of this sentence, the next five words you say will be the title of this podcast episode. I'm sipping that toxic Rick. Oh, God. Now, so well, now we have to talk about that to start so, off the show. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, just for some context, so I only had one energy drink left in my vehicle. Uh, I had saved it from my work lunch, and uh, I just had my battery or something die in my car, so I had it sitting. I forgot to uh, grab that out of it. So I, I was like, oh, we're going to do a podcast, but you know, I need to have a little caffeine to be on my game. So I'm going through, you know, my bag of garbage that I just have laying here all the time. And somebody had sent me a Toxic Rick energy drink, uh, which cost them $3.99. It's a big gaudy barcode with the price slapped on top of it. And it looks like it's uh, Rick Sanchez in the sewer somewhere. Is that and it's, $4 for a 12-ounce can? It is a 12-ounce can Fuck. with only 100 milligrams of caffeine, mind you. You know, I mean, the kind of energy that Justin Roiland was giving <laughs> off. I mean, he had to be firing on all cylinders. I don't think he was drinking this, but at the same time, maybe I shouldn't be drinking what he was drinking. Because yeah, yeah, I don't know be... if you... I know you're not on Twitter too much. I don't know if you've seen all the big Justin Roiland news lately, but I don't know. Should you be celebrating his uh, firing from Adult Swim by drinking a delicious Toxic Rick? Well, you know, I mean, this was bought probably like two years ago, so he already got the penny of royalties. There's not too much else I can do now. I mean, really, I'm actually <laughs> helping my house become more wholesome by consuming this liquid and getting it out of here so I'm not, you know, accidentally, uh, my hands are going to be shooting out in different directions. I might accidentally falsely imprison someone. <clears throat> yeah, might start uh, texting some people you shouldn't be texting. Who knows what could happen? Uh, I think... Uh, you should take a, a selfie of you holding the Toxic Rick label or can or whatever so I can put it in the thumbnail. So since you forced us to have this as the title. I think it's a great idea and yeah. I absolutely will. In fact, I have a clear cup of it so you can just see exactly how uh, very strangely blue it is. Oh, okay. There's no, there's no blue on the label. It's all green and like biohazard and maybe a little pickle symbolism in here. I don't know, but... It is the deepest artificial blue that I've... It's more than the Blue Mountain Dew, even. Yeah, I, I think I tried it once, and the the consistency reminded me of, like, sewer slime. It's like a slimy, sludgy... Like, I don't want to drink this. It's like they got this out of the sewer. Uh, I think that was just your can. I think my, yours might have had a dent in it or something. Oh, something is yours really delicious, then? Uh, I would say that it is pleasantly neutral. Hmm. It's, uh, it's kind of given me, like, a almost like a Sierra Mist kind of neutrality. Well, to be fair, you have to have an extremely high IQ to appreciate the flavor of Toxic Rick energy drink. So maybe I'm just not, you know, that high up there with the intellect. Uh, that could be true. And it's full sugar. It's 160 calories. So for it to not really have much of a taste, I mean, that's really some wubba lubba dub dub science in and of itself, if you ask me. Wait, no, no. You said you've had that in your house for two years. Yours is the one that's expired, motherfucker. You're, no wonder why uh, it doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, lot I211. I, 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 I really need to have a high IQ to understand that. That shit has been rotting no in your basement for years. And you're like, oh, and I'm sure this is how it's supposed to taste i'm sure it's supposed to taste like nothing uh, well you know look, rick he goes through all these dimensions and universes i mean you, you can't know what's <laughs> been you know sitting where it probably tastes like the portal juice rick oh. juice this is this is <laughs> kind of tastes like what was in the jar with pickle rick when you know if he was like a real pickle and justin roiland juice yeah <laughs> delicious that's what they should rebrand it as now that rick and morty is canceled <laughs> can we can we uh we could read, maybe do the title, I'm drinking Justin Roiland juice. <laughs> it's too late. You fucking said Toxic Rick. We can't go back on the, there's a sacred bond of I said the next five right. words, you know. I was hoping you'd say, um, uh, well, uh, and then it would just be like, just <laughs> nonsense in the title. But no, you actually put together a coherent sentence. Yeah, you know, I've been not online as much these last couple of months. I'm not just purely uh, having to speak in memes anymore. <laughs> it's like my, my brain, the, the pathways have kind of grown out a little bit. There's the bridges are being built between the neurons again. And I can actually think about more things. 
Are you having just deep philosophical conversations with your coworkers about things that aren't like shit and piss and cum? Uh, well, actually, you know, I did have a conversation um, when I thought that I was going to be able to come hang out with you before my vehicle had some unfortunate issues. He said um, that he was watching a new anime and that we sh- I should watch it when I was visiting you. And I'm like, OK. So anyways, my vehicle broke down. So I decided to pull up an episode of it on my own just to it, it came to mind. He said it was my life is Inuki San's dog. So I was like, all right, well, you know, it starts playing and it's like some anime girls running around or whatever. It's nothing, you know, nothing really setting me off mentally or whatever. And uh, so like seven minutes into this first episode, it's it's just hentai. It's like it's not <laughs> anime, it's hentai. Okay. And, I'm, and I'm sitting there and just watching, you know, like 45 uninterrupted seconds of like bare breasts being washed in a shower, uh, like with erotic noises. And I'm like... Why I don't I don't really know. Yeah, when well, you thing- can you describe the coworker who recommended this to his fellow coworker? Uh, well, so afterwards I, I looked him up on Steam because he told me that uh, if I added him on Steam that he would give me some anime recommendations. And his whole profile is like he buys all those uh, hentai dating sims on Steam and like 100 percents them. That's like his thing. Wait, other people can can see what I'm doing on Steam? Uh oh. Oh, I'm in trouble, Aggie. <laughs> well, he has, you know, if you're at a certain level, you could you have showcases on Steam where you can like, oh, put this here, you know. Uh, some people, I think, I don't know if you it's can like involved. have a Mount Rushmore on your profile of your favorite games, and his is like hentai porn, hentai porn. Yeah, yeah. He's, okay. He, he, like he buys, like he buy. I mean, these games aren't usually expensive. I think they're usually probably, you know, under twenty dollars for sure, if not under five dollars. But he always buys a new one and he goes through it to get all like the pictures unlocked or whatever. Does he know that his favorite genre is pornography? Because maybe he's just so attuned to it, he thinks that this is normal and he should be recommending it to people. Well, you know, I'm thinking about uh, now that I'm sort of getting the bigger picture here, no pun intended, uh, that maybe I ought to maybe (laughs) bring it to his attention. I mean, you know, he's, he's a younger guy. He's about your age, you know, so he's not my age. He's a little bit younger. And, uh, you know, he's always... Uh, seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders, very level-headed, but this one kind of just came out of left field well, for me. Could though. it be he is uh, profiling you, uh, stereotyping you by how you look, Eggy? He sees you and thinks, oh, this is another hentai connoisseur who I can confide in. Well, I, I won't lie. He definitely could have gotten that uh, energy <laughs> for me, absolutely. <laughs> Are you putting off that energy at work? Well, he's talking about anime and video games, and, you know, I'm, like, all there. You're the only person in the whole building who's, like, listening to him. So, yeah, I guess who else is going to talk about that shit? I I do get that uh, energy, if you will, a lot. Yeah, for some reason, like, all the guys at work all approach me and will tell me, like, 20-minute life stories about, like, how their life is going, and (laughs) they don't do this to anybody else but me, and I I don't really know why, but it does happen. Well, you're a good listener, Aggie, so... You know, I think we should uh, have a moment of silence and listen to the audience real quick to prove how good of listeners we are. Okay, that was it. Uh, Aggie, do you have anything else you want to talk about your car breaking down? I guess we should mention you were supposed to be here at my house for this episode, but uh, what's going on? You got a new car and it's broken. Well, it seems like it still was all just kind of, uh, you know, an unfortunate coincidence because... I basically got the vehicle and it was a very good price. Now, you know, my parents were a little bit concerned at first because, uh, you know, it was about $4,000 cheaper than the uh, other, you know, listings in the field. But, you know, the guy had a pretty good backstory. You know, he's an auto hobbyist and he just had, you know, vehicles sitting that and they were just there and he didn't have anything to do with them and he was just trying to get, you know, get these vehicles out. So, I mean, vehicle's very clean. Uh, first, So what happened was first, uh, when I was driving it, after I'd driven it for that one day, uh, the starter burnt out, which it's not really something you, you can predict. Uh, it could just happen anytime, and it is what it is, um, you know? So that was kind of just, a, oh crap, unfortunate. But then uh, immediately after that was fixed, I went to pick up the vehicle and <laughs> I started, I drove to the edge, uh, the opposite edge of the parking lot, and uh, all of a sudden it stalled and killed again. So then I uh, yeah, just, you know, basically had him co- the shop come back out and look at it again. Wait, so I was you were stranded, right it was after work, like late at night, you're stranded in the middle of nowhere and your car breaks down and it's cold yeah. as fuck outside? 
I, I did have to. Uh, I did have it towed to the uh, auto repair shop, so <clears throat> that was one thing. But so he looks at it again, uh, and he, you know, it, it was unfortunately right about when they're about to close because you know I just, you know, I'm like that. It's like, oh, they're about to close in ten minutes. All right, well, I better go pick my car up. It is what it is, but. Uh, yeah, he looks at it and he's like, oh yeah, well, we went to like plug the battery back in. We just like didn't plug it in all the way. My bad. You know, so then he does that. <laughs> then he's like, oh, but yeah, this oil light's on. So we should probably check that out. And I'm like, well, whatever. Fine. You know, fine. Yeah, just just look at it. I don't want to have to bring it back because then it's going to be just like more fees or whatever. They're all just going to kind of just put this in and didn't, you know, charge me anything additionally to uh, look it over again. Uh, but... He called me this morning and he said that, yeah, so the guy who I bought it from, an auto hobbyist, you know, he was like all inside and out of these vehicles all day, every day, you know, no homo, but uh, (laughs) he, uh, I guess he had installed some new part himself, you know, because he wanted to have it cleaned up or whatever for selling it. And so like he had done like a fresh install of some, you know, part of like the oil pump or whatever and maybe he had just like not installed it all the way so pretty much if i had driven that car for like 10 more minutes the engine could have like exploded because all of a sudden like oil stopped being like going through that's like the light that came on when they got the battery plugged back in properly was that so but then again so the auto shop's telling me oh yeah well we can tell this is new but something's not right so we're just gonna have to look at it so then it's like okay two very plausible options either this boomer you know fucking turn put something in wrong or the auto shop is just gonna try and like you know fucking rip me off or whatever they're both very plausible options but at the same time the guy who i bought the car from and the auto shop are both like very jolly like charismatic guys so it's like really either of them could be a fault here it could be a total coincidence uh but they're all you know seem like decent enough people so yeah charismatic people usually are not con men i don't think the two go hand in hand (laughs) (laughs) absolutely uh but like i said well yeah i think you got really lucky actually because the plan was right before your car you know like breaks down while you're driving you were about to drive like four or five hours in the middle of the night to my house imagine if you broke down in the middle and like really nowhere at 3 a.m so it's a good thing that happened before you started driving that is very true, you know, and that's the thing. You look at it and you're like, man, you know, this sucks. You know, I'm, uh, I work hard for my money doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> and, you know, this is, this is what I get. But you're right. It could have, uh, always be much worse. And it's always good to look at the silver lining while I'm sipping my toxic Rick juice. I'm cozy. I'm comfortable. I'm burning a $50 candle that I bought from an internet guy. You know what? And life, you know, it's not so bad. And really, for the purposes of what we're doing online here, I think this worked out even better because, uh, truth be told, I was running a little bit behind finishing a video that actually, we're recording this podcast at uh, 2 o'clock on Wednesday, and I have a new video coming out two hours from now, so I've been wasting the last few days finishing this video uh, that I should have had done before Aggie was supposed to be here, but thankfully he, <laughs> he couldn't make it. So video came out. Now we have a whole week to actually plan some good content that we want to make uh, when you come down next week. That's right. And you know what also I remembered was that I was asked like three weeks to do uh, three weeks ago to do a podcast like late later on tonight with um, Be Nice to Me Productions, very underrated musical and sketch comedy group i've done a little bit of collaboration with those guys um you know they kind of got some nods in the last year for working with uh, sam hyde and nick rochefort but uh yeah i forgot that they're like oh yeah we got a podcast coming up and do 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 you know if you're free and i hear this is something i'm really bad about um i'll get a message and i'll look at it and i'll be like oh yeah i think that works but i don't respond to the message i just like see it so i had seen this message from uh, Alex Schultz is uh, the gentleman's name. I'd seen the message, uh, you know, three weeks ago or whatever, and I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, I don't think I have anything going on at that time. Uh, so <clears throat> when I, after I had the vehicle thing, I was like, oh, wasn't I wasn't going to do like a podcast this week sometime. And I like look at it and yeah, it was unread like three weeks ago, never responded <laughs> to it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, that's good. And he's like, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's. Uh, we're, so we're, if, we're you sent, seeing... if you sent Eggy a message, don't lose hope. <laughs> he oh, might get back to you within a couple of years or two. 
yeah, I mean, I I definitely don't go a whole year unless you don't, you know, poke back at me after a couple months or whatever. Uh, except for those guys that I don't want to respond to. Because sometimes guys send me these messages where they're just like, you know, they're just kind of saying some weird stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, I ain't really trying to talk like that. So, but, but, The Kino Corner was trying to recommend <laughs> movies to you and you just blocked him? <laughs> yeah, I was like... Uh, I kind of kept on setting the phone down and kind of, you know, uh, rubbing my forehead like um, Captain John Picard of the USS Enterprise or whatever. And uh, then all of a sudden I clicked on my screen and it said, Kino Corner, now a millionaire celebrity with uh, 100,000 subscribers. And, you know, he was like toasting with Leonardo DiCaprio or whatever. And then <laughs> I immediately responded, you know, like to 17 messages. I'm like, oh, my good longtime personal close friend. Oh, so you're going to the Met Gala and the Oscars and the Emmys this week? Hey, you know, plus one, buddy. Damn, did he really get that level of success from 100k subs? I, I think I might might have missed the boat when I got mine. Well, I'm Kino just, really you know, has that, a million it's, it's, dollars now? That's pretty good. <laughs> good for him. I mean, I, these are some presumptions that I'm making oh, based on oh. my own uh, completely fabricated, you know, uh, mental state. But uh, But he's got the energy, though, you know, that's one thing about me. Is that I haven't, uh, I, I don't always have the energy. There's sometimes where I just lay down and I'm like just waiting to see a message on my phone that, you know, we're at the, all the nuclear weapons are being launched across the world at once and then I'll, you know, put me at ease. But, you know, he's got that energy right now. You know, I seen that when I was down there last month, I seen the studio he's building. Now that's for real. He does, he is building a studio. So, what out of Glink's old bedroom? <laughs> I, I th he's at, he's, uh, He's got like a, a whole studio that's separate from where he lays his head, if you will. Uh, well, I, I assume that's at his place of work. I don't know if he's like leasing a building or anything like that to make his fucking <laughs> movie reviews on YouTube. But uh, really, well, his studio is like when you walk into his home, like in the living room, immediately to the right of the front door is just like his fucking YouTube setup, all his shit right there. So if you yeah. uh, live with him and you want to watch television or something, or you know, eat in the live kitchen or living room or anything, uh, if Kino's doing a YouTube video, you're shit out of luck. You go to your room, little boy. Well, uh, he, I mean, he actually, it's a whole. A separate built or a separate home, if you will. Well, I'm talking about the one that we've seen. Yeah, yeah. That when I was there, when I was there last month, yeah, because he had me pull up to an address, and I was like, well, "This looks kind of like it," because it's it's close to. He's still living in that same place, but it's close to that. It's like just nearby there. So I'm like, "Oh, this." He's like, he told me to kind of pull up at a certain spot, and I'm like, "Well, this looks kind of familiar, but I feel like it's not quite what I remember." But yeah, because it's uh, it's a different place with a different setup going on he's got like a it looks like joe rogan's studio up in that thing it, but th that is not for his uh employer that's just for him uh, it might be it might be mm. part of his uh, em employer situation yeah, but I'm I, not, I'm, his, his employer is like always posting like these shitty podcasts that kino evidently produced and it's like 20 views of two boring guys talking about the lamest most boring shit i could ever imagine <laughs> and kino's like retweeting it like everybody go give it a watch and i'm like this is the like i would rather watch c c-span this is the most boring thing i've ever seen in my entire life we'll see now this is where us uh you know if if we happen to, you know, ever be in the area and, you know, get in on making some real Kino down there, you know, at that studio, but... In you any really want to have, like, a professional-looking studio? Isn't it better to, like, <laughs> be in your home office or in your basement with anime posters on the wall? I would feel like a poser with that kind of setup. I want to be authentic in my bedroom. Well, I do, I do agree with where you're coming from, but at the same time, I acknowledge the, uh... The, the energy and the drive to, you know, get some swagged out too. You know, it's, I, I think that <clears throat> for me, it would be the fact that maybe, uh, and I actually, you know, for people that know my history, many years ago, the first podcast I ever did, I was under a contract and I, uh, it was called Next Thread and I interviewed, the only episodes that ever, that survived are Lauren Southern and Ben Garrison, but I interviewed uh, Aubrey Cottle uh, who's become kind of infamous in the last few years. I interviewed Sabu, who was like from, uh, he like hacked banks and stuff. Uh, but I was under contract for that. And when you're under contract for those kinds of things, you know, you have to, uh, I mean, I, I was the, bo the boring guy in the studio then. That's why I never went anywhere and ended up just being canceled. And I, you know, they kind of just shelved me. But 
uh, you get under contract and it's like everything you do is under the scope of your, you know, whoever's, whoever you're working for. So you, you'll do a podcast, but you might have to hold your tongue on certain things or you might have to, you know, skirt around certain topics because it isn't about, you know, how you're feeling. It's about what's going to be the most uh, beneficial for the brand at large. So that's something I'm not particularly fond of. I don't know the history of uh, what you're talking about here. Who hired you and why Like, did, why did the episodes disappear? Did you get paid? What was going on? Uh, I did get paid. Yeah, basically there was a guy who just saw me, you know, towards the end of 2015. He's like, yo, this guy knows all the memes, bro. Uh, hey, you know, I work in New York and we're going to do a podcast with like, you know, notable internet people and you know your stuff. So we want to have you... Uh, be the guy that does it or whatever. So I'm living in my dinky apartment with my, you know, dinky setup, and I don't know anything about any of that stuff. I hadn't, I hadn't done any live streaming at that point, so you know, I just still have my sort of uh, speech mannerisms. That everything I have is just that of a, you know, the typical retail employee. I wasn't really. I might have had an encyclopedic uh, knowledge of things that nobody could ever possibly bother to give a shit about if it's not some meme channel or something, but. I didn't really have the presence to conduct a good conversation uh, with these people that they were inviting on. But yeah, it was like some, I don't even know. I don't even know who really was like funding it at the end of the day. It was just like some guy who I guess had a history in radio and he's like, oh, that'd be a kind of a cool podcast. And hey, that guy knows memes and here's my guy from New York that knows the other stuff. So let's put it together. And, and, and you know, they were cool guys, but uh you know, it was it was sort of like if I all of a sudden went back on YouTube and I was posting like sponsored videos from some other website or whatever. People who follow me for what I have going on are not going to probably be particularly enthralled by something else that's really leaning into uh, something that isn't me. I guess just the way that I've handled myself on YouTube and whatever. Like if the you last. if you hypothetically went on somebody else's channel and just impersonated like a completely different human <laughs> being, like how could an Eggy fan possibly enjoy that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Good question. Uh, what did you fucking interview these people about? How long did you talk to Ben Garrison? Uh, well, I think it's still archived. I think well, maybe like an hour or something. I don't know. What did you interview Ben Garrison about in 2015? Trump. Just his. And probably yeah. That's funny. I mean, I can't even imagine. You were in a studio with these people in person? No. Uh, Next Thread Podcast, Episode 2, Ben Garrison. It's 94 minutes long, and it was uploaded August 2016. It currently has 300 views and zero comments. Wow. (laughs) What the fuck? Why is it that that when these corporations, like, invest money into a show, it always has dog shit views? Like, like literally a 10-year-old who's making YouTube videos for fun does better than these, like, fucking Kino Corners millionaire employers. Maybe Uh, the YouTube game is too hard for these uh, corporate boomers. It is. You know, it's, um, yeah, I I was talking to somebody who I know, and I don't want to... I'm going to be that guy where I don't want to say too much because of their company or whatever, but they have a company that um, is decent and it has, it does decent with a lot of things, but like social media, especially now I haven't been on Twitter for about two years now. It's crazy, but Twitter has the views on your tweets now. And for the, these accounts that have a lot of followers and uh, aren't, you know, they're not really being checked by their followers anymore. It's really kind of like an insult to injury thing because you'll have like, you know, this company has 20,000 followers and I'm looking at the, you know, the tweets or whatever. Cause I'm, I'm almost thinking, you know, could I step in and maybe do like part-time social media management or something? You know, something I, I clowned as a, being a job for so many years. It was a fake job. It was my go-to. To it is a fake job, online. but if you can get paid for it, fucking go for it. Well, I mean, it's just like, we saw Wendy's and these fast food companies, you know, they kind of stepped outside the box a little bit and they did things that were maybe a little bit controversial for, you know, 1950 to, you know, maybe <laughs> say some things or add some full personality to their brand. 
and then you know they do it and you get posted on you know brands posting their l's or whatever and it gets a million retweets now everybody's <laughs> ironically following you i mean it's really just that simple to be honest you could make a fake brands posting their l account or buy an account or whatever you got to just kind of get inside the the zoomer mind because if you're just posting about oh we got specials this week uh tuesday night uh, whatever or we got uh you know for the month of january if you order blah 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 get 50 percent off and you got twenty thousand followers that's doing 300 impressions and we could all see it now mm-hmm. and it's get zero likes zero retweets it's like come on i mean if you want this to actually have some kind of tangible effect on your business you gotta you know we could see that it isn't you gotta do like anything different Maybe you should start a some sort of social media consulting service and just start your own company. And then you can like if you have your own LLC and you're like an official corporation, you can trick these stupid fucking companies into letting you run their Twitter. I I think maybe that's what we should pursue. We should start our own, uh, I guess, marketing online agency and just like take over the Twitter for, you know, all these people who can't get more than 300 views a tweet. Uh, you know, I did have, before I lost my Twitter, people, uh, you know, after the fact, after I got banned, I remember seeing some messages like, oh, that guy just bought his followers. Who even knows who that guy is? You know, and I'm like... They said that about uh, you? Yeah, they, they said, no, how do you get like 21,000 followers? Like, when you, you know... They you- think you have the money to buy followers. <laughs> like, do you know how much booze uh, old school Aggie could have bought for that follower money? Who needs it? That's right. How much money so are you saving true. now that you've uh, been staying sober? A uh, couple million I mean, dollars a month. <laughs> I mean, probably, you know, I since I've been working, I haven't been drinking like I was before. But I mean, you know, when I was drinking what I was drinking before, I mean, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month. It goes a long way for uh, towing expenses and fixing your starter and yeah, fixing exactly. your battery. I'm just, and I'm like, you know, I was kind of giving it a thought. I'm like, you know. Which, which way really is better, you know? Is it really so bad to just kind of drink and, you know, dance around uh, in, a, in my suit jacket on YouTube, you know? But, yeah, I still have, uh, I've got, I got full insurance now and everything like that. So I'm, I'm going to stay up being a wagey for a little bit more until I make sure that I kind of have everything up to speed. I have uh, better credit now, you know, I got, I got things, I got... Uh, I got money and be able to invest and whatever, you know, I'm I'm just living that normie life right now. It is what it is. You know, I did five years on YouTube. You know, I uh, hey, don't don't act like it's over. We're literally filming a YouTube (laughs) video right now. And I think we should transition into planning what YouTube uh, non wagey videos we want to make when you come next week. You know, when you when you come down to uh, it's really going back to the past to live a shitty lifestyle that sucks ass. You got to come back to uh, make some horrible videos because we, we, we've had some bad ideas uh, uh, kicking around the <laughs> Telegram chat. Maybe we should uh, enlighten the audience. I think we should. Sorry, I am uh, I'm a little bit sleepy. If anybody can notice, I'm halfway uh, falling asleep as I speak. But. Eggy, you said you might be interested in putting together some sort of snack test of mm, tetrapod or some sort of uh, <laughs> exotic meats. What is our idea for this? Well, you know, when I had uh, on my travels, if you will, uh, where I'm from, I live in the middle of a field and there's nothing going on over here. You know, you got a McDonald's 30 minutes away. That's the most exquisite cuisine, most exotic thing here. But driving around... I got my wheels on the road. I uh, stopped by some Asian markets and some different, you know, world foods. But really, it's these Asian markets, you know, where it's family ran and they have like piles of things on the floor. You know, they might have a five year old child working the register or whatever. And they get they get these imports all from all across Asia. These different meats. And they had like have them in the freezer to make sure that, you know, they might actually sell before they just totally permutate into an ice block of absolute pure freezer burn there's a cat running oh. through the store and you're not sure if it's from the street or from the inventory <laughs> exactly yes uh so i think that you know there's a lot that we see out here there's a lot of challenges if you will that 
you make TikTok and all that, but I think some good old fashioned, questionable mystery meat from foreign <laughs> countries out of some freezer somewhere, boiled in Mountain Dew and Bud Light oh. with a little bit of Dorito garnish or not. <laughs> no, that's uh, fine. That might make it better for mystery meat. I think my, my zebra should be garnished with Cool Ranch Doritos. Well, you know, let's say we get a whole horse knuckle or whatever the <laughs> fuck they so yeah, I, don't know, I need to get reacquainted. Uh, what do they have? Do they have horse meat at the fucking Asian market at your house? Uh, I mean, you know, the, somewhere they gotta have it somewhere. I know they have it in Europe. Okay. I mean, we ate those chips. I, I know they were from the banned chips, but I mean. Uh, it's banned to have a six-year-old child uh, working 80 hours a week, <laughs> well, too. We but... are kind of restricted to what we can get, like, around Iowa, like in the Midwest. I don't know if we're going to get that exotic of meats unless uh, we can really find some, like, horrible black market Chinese store. Well, it's the, you know, it's the thought that counts right now, but this is yeah. kind of, uh, you know, when, when we had the uh, dollar store seafood, we had sort of an idea in mind that kind of got adjusted a little bit to fit. I think, you know... Well, we, yeah, to, we just have to go to these all these little weird markets and find the any animal product that is from an animal I would not traditionally eat. I think if we can find like three of those, that could be a pretty good snack test. I agree. And then uh, I forget what the place is called. I think it's like Blue Sky Soda Company. They got it uh, in like mid no, north central Minnesota. <clears throat> so if I happen to drive up that way in the next week for whatever reason uh which is a possibility uh i could grab some dank uh custom sodas and we could have a little bit of uh refreshment to review alongside our delicious mystery meat review now what are the what are the mystery flavors of these sodas because i'm guessing it's not traditional flavors what do you got well, they got like corn the- pizza flavor <laughs> probably the thing of it is, is if there is, a, if there's a the, corn soda and a pizza soda, we have to mix them together. Oh, I think that could be arranged. Yeah, but go on. Sorry, I, I, I had to get that important comment out into the into the world. Well, here uh, I think this is probably good that we can have this dialogue right now because I could run this by you. Because when I had been there six months ago, or whenever it was, and I had got some originally to try, uh, what I noticed when I go in there is that they'll have these really bizarre flavors. There's some of these really bizarre flavors that have really wacky labels, but after having walked around and really uh, taking a look at it, there's kind of like one weird soda brewing company or whatever that was, all these ones that were really out there all came from the same company. So then I'm thinking to myself, I don't know, is this really as weird as I, is it saying it is, or is this specifically for like a gag gift and it's gonna be just like a regular soda? So when I went, and I picked out the sodas that I picked out. I would look them over and like, okay, this is probably authentically this strange flavor. I think the one I have left that I haven't drank yet uh, is like rhubarb flavor. I'm looking at it and it's like, it seems like it's authentically that. It's it's something different. It's probably good. Uh, well, that was kind of what I was looking for. I, 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 I don't know if that. authentic and good can uh, both be used to describe rhubarb soda. Like, <laughs> if it is authentic, wouldn't it by nature not be good? Or is rhubarb secretly good? I guess I don't know much about rhubarb. Anything uh, with a silent of, H can't be that good. I feel like it's uh, it's kind of like fruity, a little bit tart. Um, so, I mean, it's it's got exactly what, you know, a standard uh, soda should have. And so then well, Sunkiss needs to catch up. There's my su- I, rhubarb sun kissed. Make it happen, people. Uh, since I still got that one, I mean, you know, if you want to, I mean, yeah, it's been sitting in my basement for an additional six months, maybe comparatively, <laughs> but who knows how Mix long it with the, the, the toxic Rick and we'll see, you know, what happens to him. <laughs> That's That'll straight. be the potion know. to save Justin Roiland. I didn't pour out the whole toxic Rick yet, so I could put some plastic over it and we could save this half of a flat. Just no. Royal and soda. <laughs> I, I know for a fact that the high V near my house has toxic Rick, so we don't need your disgusting, um, opened, <laughs> flat, expired soda to be saved. The one that's been sitting here for two years. <laughs> uh, well, so those are our ideas for what we might be filming, and obviously we'll probably film uh, another treehouse while you're here. But I did ask my Patreon Discord for their suggestions and their questions for us to answer. Um, I do see a lot of questions and then uh, suggestions come later. Should I just do these in order or should I try to find uh, video ideas first? 
Uh, if you could give it a cursory glance, perhaps, and see if there's anything that's sticking out, but otherwise, uh, you do it in order to. Okay, uh, suggestions for recording from Sir Red Edge. Uh, more Vincent's mailbag. Uh, yeah, we, we did try to film one of those. I don't know if we talked about that. We probably did last time you were on, but we tried to film a Vincent's mailbag in December, and we even trekked all the way up this fucking mile, you know, the million steps built by the Native Americans so long ago, and we take the wheelchair and all this stuff all the way up the mountain, and then it's like 25 degree wind all day, and we just, we couldn't even hear each other speak, so we had to scrap the video. Uh, Indeed. He also wants us to play a funny game like we did with Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Uh, are there any little Let's Play games that come to mind that you want to have fun with? Well, I'm not sure if any immediately come to mind, uh, but I'm sure that they, there are some out there. I wouldn't uh, doubt that at all. Have you played the and game Who Wants to Beat Up a Millionaire? <laughs> oh, that's true. That's a good one. That's that is a classic, yeah. I, that has my vote. Yeah, was that for Dreamcast? I, I don't know if they. It's on they probably PC. Had like a PC. Yeah, they do have that's a PC. what I played right. it on. Okay, right on. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I got my new laptop uh, since the last time I've been down. That's kind of got, you know, it could, they could play that at least. So yeah. I no, hope that. I hope it can run. Who wants to beat up a millionaire from 1999? <laughs> but maybe it'll be so new that it literally cannot run it. That could be. Yeah, I have it's seen got that, that Windows happen. 11. Uh, Juju wants us to make a Mexican slash Latin candy snack testers. Are you a big fan of spicy Mexican candies? Uh, I would say that I am kind of fond of them, yeah. Um, I had never had them at all. I think the first time I might have had some was when I went to California for the first time, which was uh, almost six years ago now, Just just very close to that. But uh, I had sort of a, uh, a proto snack tester i used to do something called fan mail food where people would send me stuff to, to do a review of and i got some uh south american latin american stuff at that time that was kind of my first exposure to a wide range of it but yeah i would definitely uh be down with that i'm trying to think of what that one was that i did last year when i gave away the cpu that i had and not the cpu the motherboard i had some uh weird like cereal straw type stuff but it was kind of had a little bit of, like spiciness to it, and I guess that was uh, an interesting uh, Latin treat. But yeah, I'm definitely uh, down with that. Are the Latin and Mexican people the ones who put literal worms inside of their suckers, or is that somebody else? Because uh, I have a yeah, sucker somebody sent me. I, I still have it from like four years ago. There's a <laughs> fucking worm embedded in this sucker. And I'm wondering, do people actually enjoy eating this, or is it supposed to be disgusting? Well, you know what really be bussing on God for real, no cap, would be to have a little bit of chamoy to uh, dab on that sucker. What is chamoy? Oh, see, this this shows me that we do need to do this. All right, yeah, take <laughs> okay. that down. We'll do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, mark it down. So uh, who, who suggested that? I think it was Juju. Uh, congrats, you did it. Yeah, we'll do some, uh, like, chamoy with melon. I think you'll get down with that. And I did scroll through the rest, and those were the only video suggestions. So these people don't want to watch us do anything in particular. I guess they just want to see us. Which <laughs> might be a good thing. Well, you know, I think a lot of snack testing recommending going on here. I'm definitely down with that. Maybe a uh, dank drink combo tester. Maybe I could bust the... Uh, I got my full dark wizard fit. You know, I don't even need to necessarily, uh, you know, play a character. I could just, you know, get my my dark Ozzy <laughs> fit on and uh, maybe come up with some dank drink combos. What kind of drink combos? Are we talking like energy drinks or alcoholic? Well, preferably both. Uh, I thought you were both done together. drinking for videos and stuff. You, you would actually want to do that. Well, I mean, I think it's I feel like I mean, no, this is uh, what was it? What I'm saying here is easily, uh, you know, pick a part of bowl as, uh, you know, something I probably shouldn't say, but <laughs> uh, I feel like there's a difference, you know, between a one time for a video versus, you know, uh, doing it all the time, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that, but one time I, I thought, okay, well, it's for a video, I'll do one shot of heroin, and that one <laughs> shot was enough, and now I can't stop thinking about it, so. 
We might, might need to avoid all these dang drink combos. We might become uh, Cobra addicts all over again. I actually uh, also have not been drinking as far as uh, I can remember. I might not have had a sip of alcohol almost all year. And uh, yeah. I definitely do not miss it. Fuck that shit. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you know, there are other substances I find much better than fucking alcohol, but I guess you know, everybody well, has you know, their own favorite. Um, I think the bill is in the house right now in Minnesota to legalize that dank kush. So uh, they've already... Uh, Randy the Wild Horse is about to have a whole new ride, if you know what I'm saying. This channel is going to just go exponential. He's going to be like, you know, the... the uh, smoking on that Tom Van McKelden Kush, you know, it's gonna just take off. You know, <laughs> well, evidently he's already been doing Van. that. Like he he said that he keeps getting high on stream and falling asleep, and he told me he's gonna stop doing that. And I'm like, what the fuck are you getting high on? How are you getting drugs? You don't even. What do you do? <laughs> well, well, they they do have. Uh, I think THC edibles are legal in Minnesota right now. I think they're just the flower is what's under. Maybe they legalized uh -huh. the edibles last summer or something that might be what he was because, taking i just know because i saw um i think it was maybe july of last year there was a uh, uh signs up for a company that was hiring it's not the one i worked for by the way but it was hiring uh they were starting a factory an edible factory uh like about i don't know 45 minutes away or something looking for thc enthusiasts uh hmm. who are like dedicated to the culture and want to you know maybe not not step into an immediately successful company, but are willing to, you know, put the work in to get it up off the ground and be a part of something. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm cool on that. I'm not really all that. I mean, send the job application to Randy. <laughs> they're probably still hiring. Maybe they're successful. He's buying that from them. He's the number one customer, and they're gonna offer him, a, you know, a brand ambassador position. He'll, they'll start <laughs> making more money than us. He's gonna get sponsorships on his YouTube, and it's gonna just go exponential. I can just see it now. Every Randy the Wild Horse stream is brought to you by Edible Weed, and he's just like he gets high as fuck and falls asleep every stream. <laughs> That'd be a great, I mean, advertisement for the edible. It works on this man. Maybe I should give it a shot. Yeah, <laughs> I had right seen uh, there was a couple instances over the last couple years where I would see somebody. I don't know why it would get recommended to me. Maybe because I listen to so much uh, good uh, music about the struggle. But I get recommended these YouTube channels about guys you know, reviewing weed or whatever, and <clears throat> they. Uh, it's sort of like how these slot channels, they'll do a video where they win and all the losing is edited out. They would do mm -hmm. these videos where they're like, oh, that's good. You know, I could really taste the whatever. And uh, yeah, and that would be like their, you know, seven minute review video. But then they would go live to like listen to people's SoundCloud pages or whatever for a, for a monetary fee. And yeah, they'd be live for like two hours and just be totally out stone cold, just like <laughs> unconscious in their chair because they're so high. People will sit oh. there and watch somebody zonked out, not even saying anything. Well, these were instances that were brought to my attention because they were, uh, you know, a little bit controversial, controversial, oh. because they're like, yo, this guy, he's not really, yeah, he's not a peace, love, hippie like me. This guy, you know, he's taking like 40 dabs and his like, his eyes are melting. They're and, mad that he's know. smoking too much on stream. Well, that would be, it, you know. It, it, there was sort of, uh, you know, this is something I'm a little bit familiar with, too, where you'd have, you know, they would have the YouTube channel and then they would go live and have that immediate, you know, money from going live and getting donations or whatever. And then that immediate money would immediately go into weed uh, for these channels <laughs> and some other channels maybe was going into something else, you know. I, I, so it's uh, literally but, just King Cobra streaming to get more beer money so we can get drunk on stream. And that's the endless perpetual cycle. Uh, yeah, and and to be honest, I would suspect that it probably happens even more than what I've been aware of, uh, just because, you know, it's kind of how it is these days. You know, uh, gender relations haven't been solved yet. <laughs> We've been trying our hardest, but sometimes uh, people suck. I need a beer, as, as some uh, famous right. T-shirts have said. Well, speaking of all this drug talk, the first question from a new... Anunnaki Bro wants to know what is our favorite psychedelic? Could it be the mushrooms we had at Rusty Cage's house? <laughs> I think that might be the only one we've done together unless... Is, is weed a psychedelic? I don't even know. Uh, I mean... I guess. Probably... Fucks with your brain. Well, 
but not like like a mushroom or a, an acid. I one. think I think there's uh, you know certain strains that are could have maybe more of that effect. Uh, I'm not really a big weed guy to know that, but I've gleaned that from things I've seen over the years. Um, yeah, I would say I haven't really done too many of those, so I'd probably say mushrooms. But not, not the, I don't know, the ones at Rusty's, I don't really remember. It might have been because I was also drinking a lot at that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, when I was in, I was up upper New York. Um, I was up at like the coastline at like the border of, uh, I forget what that's even called, but I was up by the beach up there. Uh, and that was last, no, actually that was like, it was actually right after Virgin Fest. So it was September 2021 because I flew back from Virgin Fest and I flew right out to New York City and I had to take a $300 Uber across like the entire state of New York. God damn. <clears throat> from uh, JFK, like yeah, up to the coastline. I'm, I'm surprised the guy even went up there, but I think it, maybe it was like 200 and I tipped him $100 because it was like, <laughs> literally in the middle of nowhere and he was about, about to burn that whole tip driving back to wherever, but it, it was decent. But um, I was up there and I had tried some and I, you know, it was uh, from a reputable source and uh, the guy was like, but you don't want to drink because it's going to like muddle it, you know, because mm. that's all right. So I didn't do that. And I had it then. And yeah, it just was really uh, my sensory perception was very heightened. You know, I didn't like see hallucinations or whatever, but, you know, just all all the colors were more colorful. You know, everything like the brightness was brighter. Uh, the sounds were more crisp and clear. I could see more clearly. So that was pretty cool. That that was a positive experience. I was, uh, in fact, literally moved to tears by the beauty of nature. Because up there, you wow. know, it's, you're, you're there by the coast and you got some trees or whatever. But this was like, I can't remember exactly. Specific. I remember there was, a, there was like a dinner club there, maybe like a boat club. Uh, but this is like a really a vacation home area. So I can't even remember uh, the specific location of it off the top of my head now. If I looked at a map, I would. But... It's just very beautiful, natural area, and so kind of just to be around it, it you know, really was a very emotional experience. Yeah, I I remember um, when I would read something, uh, like the letters w were changing colors and literally like dancing on the page. So I, I thought it was very fun just to read because the words were literally moving around. <laughs> yeah, so. see, that's, I never had an experience like that. Oh, damn. Yeah, like literally, like like the colors of the rainbow, like ch like each letter changing, and yeah, I'm saying like too much, which is gonna be embarrassing because I make fun of people for saying like in my new video. But <laughs> to be fair, I'm half asleep. Give me a break, people. Have you been listening to that new Ice Spice like album? That might be, maybe it's getting to you. No, I'm just genuinely sleepy because I was up all night finishing this video, and then I did ha get woken up at 6 a.m. this morning, so it's a rough night. Uh, I might actually take a little nappy poo after this podcast, Aggie. I'm so excited. But we still have many questions to answer. <laughs> many. Like, for example, Bloat wants to know, what are our thoughts on the Egghead Island arc so far? What are your thoughts? Egghead Island? Yeah. Not, I don't know if I... What is that? <laughs> the, the current arc of One Piece. Oh. Yeah. Well, big, big unfortunately... Fan of the <laughs> well, just off the name alone, I'm going to give it an upvote. I, I have no idea anything about it, but, you know, it's got to be good. It's a double upvote for me. I'd say it's a huge improvement over Wano. Uh, it has not uh, necessarily proven itself to be better than a Cakehead, or fuck, <laughs> Whole Cake Island, <laughs> fucking Cakehead Island. Um, <laughs> but this is, I mean, it's revving up to be a 10 out of 10 great arc, and it's starting off the final saga of one piece in a very big exciting way uh next question giant wants to know what is eggy's dating advice for 20 somethings oh, eggy well, as know. a man who did a lot of dating in his 20s what advice can you give the youth uh well basically when uh the whole meme flu situation happened a few years ago uh, that was when i kind of decided that i really had no idea anymore you had this whole thing of you know, people asking me, oh, people were asking me questions similar to that. And I'm like, well, you can't go outside. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, let, let me sit here for a second and really try to actually formulate a real answer to this. <laughs> um, I think you should probably, this is just based on what I've seen as an old man now who's from the outside looking in on the youth. 
uh, you know, fuck sake goes on. <laughs> Trying to see, you know, how people are getting down these days. I would recommend that you should, first off, don't be fat. If you're fat, you gotta get rid of that right away. Oh, uh, fuck. You should buy blank shirts and jeans from, like, 1985, and then you should customize them in cool ways. Now, hear me out on this. Okay. And... Then you want to go for a haircut that fits your aesthetic. And now I know this sounds like some total normie cope, but just continue <laughs> listening to... Because what you're going to do is then you're going to put on your custom outfit. You're going to, you know, get your style together. And you're going to kind of, you know, maybe you're, you're got some real messed up thing going on. Maybe you have two heads. Maybe you got three arms, whatever it is. Whatever that is, you're going to just kind of lean into that. And then you're going to uh, make a TikTok page and make TikToks leaning into that aesthetic uh, because I don't know how you approach women anymore. I mean, I, I, they're all, they be on their phone, you know, they don't, they be on, <laughs> eating those hot Cheetos and twerking on their phone or whatever they do. And charging it. So you gotta, you gotta reach, you gotta reach them how they're gonna be able to be reached at this point. You know, yeah, they're kind of uh, automatonomous, uh, just an extension of a neural network. It's probably going to be AI, GPT, chatbot, Chad, who's just going to start materializing in augmented reality, and we're going to all be screwed. But anyway, in the meantime, uh, you know, if you want to get a, a girl's attention, uh, yeah, do a TikTok because, listen, you know, women who do TikTok, uh, they're probably all very sick people, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere near them. But yeah, do that's, a TikTok. that's the really that's the horrible part of this argument here, Aggie, is that oh, no, no, you no. can only attract women who use TikTok. No, because they re TikToks are reposted on every social media platform nowadays, and regardless, <laughs> post your own TikToks privately and then screen record them and post them on YouTube. Well, I'm just saying because I'm on Instagram and I'm on YouTube, I'm not on TikTok. I have never, well, I, I like the first week TikTok came out, I downloaded it, didn't care for it, and never used it again. So that was like uh, actually in 2018 now, but um, so man, TikToks have been around for a while. Anyway. I see them all the time. They're constantly posted in front of me, no matter what. You go on 4chan to read some constructive media critique, and there's, you know, the soundless Disney fan Soy Jack WebM from TikTok where he's doing the Fortnite dances or whatever <laughs> about the new Disney Plus show or whatever. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't stop. But here's the thing, though, right? Disney fan or whatever. <laughs> okay, you don't want to be him, but whatever. These people. <laughs> They did something that stood out in a sea of, you know, on TikTok, it's probably like 10 billion, uh, you know, like 10 year olds who are trying to do the latest dance or whatever that they, and it gets one view and it's just, you know, a bunch of swamp garbage, just nonstop, full to the brim of total garbage. So you do something that's a, unique in any kind of way. I mean, even just like 5% unique, <clears throat> you start getting some traction. Uh, it's going to be a conversation starter at the least, and, you know, best case scenario, there's some chick who only logs onto Facebook to click like on a picture of a dog. Maybe somehow she sees your TikTok, and she's like, oh, that's cool. And then you see that she says that, and you immediately, after stalking her page, you know, get into her DMs by some sort of, uh, you know, strange tactic that I wouldn't understand because I'm too old to. But either way, you get in there, and you shoot your shot, get the combo going, where's some digits, etc., that's probably what a Zoomer should do these days, uh, but that's from the outside looking in. Everything that I knew is dead. Mm -hmm. The world that I knew is dead. I'm old now. Okay, Zoomers, here's the real deal for you if you want to feel. Uh, don't listen to what Eggy just said. All of that is nonsense. Uh, he wants you to buy outfits and dance on TikTok. That's going to cost you time and money. And if you had either of those things, you wouldn't be struggling to find a woman. So, no, uh, it's too far expecting people to learn how to dance, expecting people to put themselves out there. Women should be coming to you. Uh, women should want your attention and your time and your affection, and they should want to give you sexual favors uh, all for free. You shouldn't have to earn it. And my solution to that uh, for dating in the modern age is, as Aggie said, uh, technology is advancing so much 
and this this uh, chat GPT that you were talking about, I saw that evidently it can pass the bar exam. It is that sophisticated that <laughs> it, it can answer those questions and like the professor cannot tell if it was a human or a computer. So if you want to avoid all the stress and hassle of dating but still get the benefits of affection and love, I would say just start dating chat GPT because if it's smart enough to pass the bar, it's surely it's smart enough to give you the attention you need to not commit suicide. If you've seen the movie Her, it worked out great for that guy dating his fucking computer. You know, it can talk to you. What else do you need? Uh, that's my advice for the modern dating. You know, uh, that actually just reminded. Well, I mean, I suppose you could ask Chat GPT to generate you um, a personality that women are attracted to. Or you Once could again, say, to respond to me as if you are 18-year-old Luna Lovegood and pretend <laughs> you're my girlfriend. And chat GPT will do it. So fuck, just go for it. dude. You, you can make your waifu talk to you now. You don't need these TikTok women. That is pretty true. Also, I want to say, just to clarify for the record, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, I'm not a personality coper, but I am saying that, you know, if you see a woman and you say, uh, how do I talk to a girl who likes... Uh, Hello Kitty and uh, Japanese clothing, you know, they probably got a billion pages of of how to do that, I would imagine. But anyway, both very good recommendations that will steer everybody <laughs> in the right direction, I think. Yeah, neither of us gave advice on, like, going out to a bar to meet somebody. It's just get on uh, your phone and try to find love. I'm, I was say, when 2020 came, it, I, I would give advice changed. like that to guys because... You know, it definitely, I had a lot of anxiety and that was one thing when I was growing up, I would go out and I would just sit at the bar by myself and it wasn't going anywhere. But being in the environment was a little bit anxiety inducing to me being around so many people and it was loud and it was kind of boisterous and I was introverted, but then I'd have a couple beers and I'd kind of loosen up a little bit and it would help me sort of, uh, <clears throat> you know, get adjusted to these environments, you know, in a way that I hadn't really been able to before but yeah i mean i guess that's still out there now now that you can be in public spaces again but yeah i'm, get, I'm just getting too old it is what it is uh i guess if you want to hit on women in person uh, do it when they're at their place of employment so they can't leave and they have to be nice to you do it when they're extremely emotionally and mentally vulnerable due to uh, unforeseen life circumstances that you could uh you know you know, uh, uses an opportunity to inject your uh, downloaded Ryan Gosling personality into. Yeah, if you find out that your Wendy's cashier's mother died, pounce on that opportunity immediately and make her your girlfriend. Eggy, we have and, uh, a we have a lot of questions left, and uh, we're almost right. out of time. Should we rapid fire through these? Probably. Let's go. Okay, Nox Decius, question for Eggy. Hi, Eggy. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, you know. It's it's been a kind of a rough couple of days with my vehicle problems and you know just and you know how life is, but at the end of the day, I'm doing well. Baron von Brunk says, "Eggy, how's the fitness goal going? You know, if you dropped about 20 to 30 pounds and got a hair transplant, you could look like Brad Whitford. Never surrender." And then in parentheses, he says that he himself lost 30 pounds and got a hair transplant. Oh, so, congrats, well, Barry. Very nice. Yeah, I I, uh, I, th I think he had mentioned to me that he had, was working on his fitness, but I didn't know about the hair transplant. You know, Sunny Side from Best Ever Food Review Show, he did it. Baron Von Brunk. Uh, who else? Uh, I think uh, Charles Carroll. I haven't watched. He, made a, he uploaded a new video the other day about something like that. I don't know if he was being real or not, but I don't know. Maybe it's hairline uh, treatment season. Maybe I need to be looking into that. But <clears throat> in any case... Um, I've still been just kind of maintaining. I'm still getting my fitness in, but I think I'm just kind of eating too much still. Uh, I like to be very on point with my job, and so I just kind of eat big lunches. I, mean, I probably need to. I, I have just haven't. I've been very stable in any case. I haven't been gaining any weight, but I haven't really been losing it either. Uh, and I'm still still getting some fitness in, so I'm kind of middle of the road right now on that. Doing better than me, at least. I'm probably still gaining weight uh, as the weeks go by. But I, I it might be a muscle because I have actually been doing a, a weightlifting routine now. So maybe weight gain is a good thing at this point. Well, you know, I'm not a uh, person who judges people on, uh, you know, about, uh, their appearance or anything like that. 
Um, but I do remember that I think I weighed uh, over 100 pounds more than you at one point. And so, I mean, I was overweight, but I think if you gained five to 10 pounds or whatever, then that's not a bad thing. I think, you know, you could, you're getting stronger, muscling up. Yeah, it's just gotta be gaining it in the right places. That's the problem. Uh, you're gonna have to explain this one to me. Ad Reed says, did Aggie hit one, two, three, four yet? And there's like a, a slash between each number. Does that mean anything to you? Um, uh, it might be um, a type of weightlifting thing. Uh, hmm. But otherwise, to be honest, yeah, I probably forgot. Because the last stream I did before I just decided to step away for the last two months was... Uh, I drank, you know, like 15 shots of liquor in that time. So if it was something they were talking about, then I might have forgot. I might remember <laughs> it immediately with some more context, but it's uh, not not hitting me uh, right off the bat. Okay. Uh, Mr. Coffee wants to know, Aggie, what is the answer to the universe? Uh, well, I would say trust the plan, trust the process. Uh, make sure that you aren't getting caught up in online arguments uh, you should touch and interact with Lindy tangible things. You should touch rocks and water. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I was going to start tanning again. I forgot uh, the nearby tanning place had a deal going on uh, like two weeks ago, like 50% off. And I was going to go buy like a big tanning membership. I know it sounds like something that 30 year old women do, <laughs> but at the same time, I think it's very warm and cozy. And I think, you know, it's good for your getting you some you know some type of sun-esque treatment to the body when you're uh you know in these cold winter months but when it's not as cold outside then yeah you should be out and soaking up the sun and uh all that i think that's that will truly open your mind to uh all that you could possibly ask for yeah, once again, I'm going to have to give the exact opposite advice from Eggy here. Uh, no tanning, people. I want you to look deathly, pale, sickly, ghostly. You should look like you have not seen a ray of sunshine in years. That's the the kind of skin you should be going for. Don't go for this like, oh, I'm a, I'm a bronzed, tall, dark, and handsome Eggy man. No, I want us to all to look like pale freaks who don't come out of basements. Uh, you know what? And that might be for some bu for some people. Um, you know, so that's why we each have our own perspectives. Oh, so we're yeah, really covering the whole the whole spectrum. And I'm not just talking autism. Oh, there was a man who once, you know, I think agreed with me that maybe like the wider the skin, the better. And he tried to do something about it. So I don't know. Maybe I should go oh. read something he had to had to say. Was that Kanye? Yeah, it was Kanye West. He wrote a song called Graduation. It was about uh, he graduated. He graduated to uh, to racist. Uber <laughs> yeah, he graduated to whatever the top of the SS is. But we're not allowed to say those words for at least another two weeks on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rapid fire questions before I literally fall asleep. Uh, Artillery wants to know, why does an Aggie attempt to start doing IT? You probably make enough money you don't need to really consider a new career path, right? Well, I had certifications before. Uh, years ago, which I don't know if I could even, I don't have like certificates for them anywhere now. I don't even know where I'd have them. But uh, the thing for me was at the time I got certified and I think maybe you're supposed to have some kind of job placement with that. But I had like, like online schooling, which didn't really have job placements. So I was kind of sitting there and kind of just like looking at the classifieds for job help wanted with this certification you know it's like mcdonald's and you know street sweeping or whatever and so then i just ended up basically just i got these certifications took classes for months and then just had to sit there and did nothing with it I so see. i mean i could but i i, I just uh, yeah i don't know if you need to i think uh, you've got a good thing going already and yeah, if, you, if they made you redo all the certifications, just fuck that shit. Artillery doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He's always trying to look down on other people's lifestyles, always <laughs> trying to improve their status in the world while his remains at the very bottom. I don't know if I need Artillery telling us what careers to take. Well, thank you, Artillery, for the suggestion. I hope <laughs> I gave you some, uh, some sunshine on that. Uh, do we have any other advice for Artillery before we say goodbye? Maybe hey, uh, do some more rap songs work. about Rusty Cage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he was lethal with the flow, like uh, like a lethal injection. 
you know, harder than erection, you know what I'm saying? Lyrical perfection. So yeah, I keep at it on the mic. You got it. I forget, yeah, we bro. we never really did a follow-up story to when we listened to the, the rap beef. Did whoever they did it against, did they ever respond? The Was there ever a response rap? Could somebody in the comments let me know if I'm not aware of it? But uh, for the Treehouse and Eggy, I assume you don't have anything to plug, do you? Uh, not at this time. No. Listen, you know, I'm... Uh... Yeah, I'm still kind of out here touching grass and touching rocks and, uh, you know, staring at clouds and all that stuff. Uh, I'm not totally opposed to logging back on sometime in the future, but I don't know when that'll be right now. I'm just doing my thing right now. Well, everybody stay tuned for next week. Me and Iggy are going to have hopefully some videos come out if we can stay awake for them. And maybe we'll decide, fuck all of you, we're just going to watch Dragon Ball. <laughs> for three days but uh, no look forward there's probably going to be at least one video that comes out of next week for Simeon jimmy's treehouse podcast i have been treehouse and i have been podcast see you next time folks right when my cats start clawing at the fucking door